One of the most exciting things about the alumni network is finding out what everyone has been up to since they worked at PwC. And I'm super excited to be interviewing a bunch of really interesting former colleagues to find out what they've been up to since they left the firm. This is your PwC Alumni Network with me, Andy Woodfield. Today I'm going to be talking to Martin Alcock. And Martin used to work with us at the Gatwick office and in London between 2000 and 2008. He was a manager in the Audit and Transaction Services team and he qualified as a Chartered Accountant with us. Martin is the owner and director of the Travel Trade Consultancy. Martin is a prominent travel industry commentator, regularly sharing his opinions to travel industry conferences and trade publications. He's also appeared in The Telegraph, The Times, Wall Street Journal, and live from the studios of BBC One and BBC Radio 4. And I'm going to be talking to him today. Uh, hi, Martin. It's a pleasure to, to see you today. Um, Tell me about your company, Trade Travel Consultancy. It sounds very interesting. Yeah, happy to. Uh, and nice, nice to see you, Andy. So, Travel Trade Consultancy, it's um, a consulting practice focuses entirely on the travel sector. Um, we, we provide a, a range of finance, regulatory, strategic advice for tour operators, travel agents, lenders, uh, investors into, into the travel sector. So. A typical project might be, say, a private equity fund looking to buy a, a tour operator and, and needing some advice around how they should structure that transaction to satisfy the regulators, the Atoll scheme and ABTA scheme, for example. Or you might see, say, a tour operator who's looking to expand into a, another country, another territory, and, and, and wanting to understand how they go about that from, a, from an operational point of view and, and what sort of licensing and, and, and financing structure they need in place to do that. Um, uh, and increasingly at the moment, we're, we're, we're doing a lot of work, almost providing kind of quasi-finance director services like support with developing board packs, supplying for funding or, you know, building risk management systems. It's quite a range. So, it's, I mean, it's been, um, an, well, under the of the year coming. It's been an, un, an, an unusual year, hasn't it? Uh, but it's hard to think of another industry that might have been more affected by uh, the pandemic. Um, what what's this year been like for you? I mean, it's been horrendous, to, to be honest. You know, and it actually started really positively. Uh, and obviously, as the, the the news sort of filtered through, things got got worse and worse. And we found ourselves in in this March and April period, really in the in in that sort of eye of the the storm. I remember a conversation with a with a, with a client of mine who said they'd had a board meeting, and they'd taken a decision that they can either keep the business alive or keep their customers happy, but they can't do both. We've had to kind of almost entirely pivot and become full-time appliers of, um, you know, government loan scheme loans and uh, helping them through furlough schemes and all those sorts of things. We've sort of taken the decision early on that this is the time when we can really show our true worth and really prove our, you know, enhance our reputation. And a lot of our clients are really hurting and don't have the budgets to, to afford our services. And that's the decision we've taken is to, is, is to sort of help them through that. And it was really challenging on all of my my team and so then the added challenge that we faced not not only in can we survive this was the mental health aspect and the stress on my own team there are some good things that have that have come out of it but it's it's been a pretty difficult eight months i would say and do you see um light at the end of the tunnel or light on the horizon i should say yeah or i i i, I think the vaccine news you know I, i'm i'm still pretty bearish about when when vaccinated people can travel and will travel, I still think there's a, there's a lot a, a lot to be done there. You know, uh, specifically, I think the problem with with people travelling to other countries is it's the other country that bears all the risk of somebody carrying that, um, that that infection. And of course, the vaccine treats the symptoms; it doesn't necessarily stop you getting infected and, and, and carrying that infection. And so, until both the UK and the, the primary sort of des holiday destinations all hit this sort of mythical herd immunity level, you would imagine we'll still face all the same government restrictions and therefore tour operators are still going to have the same challenges that they've had. But, you know, all that being said, we definitely see this surge in confidence. Every time there's a, an opening up of a travel corridor, you know, you know Canary Islands, for example, when that was added as a, as, as a safe destination, you instantly see this spike of bookings like when the vaccine news came out and that first positive news around you know levels of efficacy and all that sort of stuff it instantly causes people to to commit and make a booking 
um, it, albeit from a, from a low base, but it's, I think, frankly, everybody needs a holiday and is looking forward or wants something in the diary to look forward to. And so, um, you know, that, that's certainly a positive sign. Uh, you, you just know we're going to see plenty of false starts and, and, and ups and downs over the coming months, but it, it feels like it's the beginning of the end, at least, which is good. I know. That is, it's quite exciting to think that um, we might be able to travel again uh, yes. properly soon. Um, and I mean, life's changed. Uh, it's kind of almost ir irrecognisable, I think, from a business travel perspective as well. Um, and I guess, I guess one of the challenges is that you know is the extent to which business travel re ever returns to those kind of levels. Have you got a view on that? Yeah, I mean, look, I'd, I'd be interested to hear hear what what your view is and, and what your colleagues are saying. I mean, my 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 view is, depending on what sector you're in and what part of what your business is, I think there's a huge amount of the the travel. I'm thinking of you know flying all day for a one hour meeting mm. with an existing client where. Zoom gives you maybe 70 to 90% of that benefit, right? Why, why, why take a full day out of the office when you can get most of the benefits? So there's a lot of our clients, we, we do a lot of client uh, work in the travel management space, and a lot of them are, are, are preparing for a significantly smaller future going forward. I think there are some um, business travel organizers that are much more niche, you know, they, they provide travel services into the oil and gas industry, let's say, or they, they, they provide you know, they, they, they help people who are running cruise ships get people from all around the world into Miami to get on a ship. That is such a specialism. And you would see that those sorts of businesses will hold up. But the general, mm. you know, PwC partners flying to New York for a, for a, um, you know, a meeting, you have to say that there's a, a significant reduction in that. Yeah, but, although I think, you know, it's still, I think that, you know, that the, the time in between travel and the travel time itself I think we, I certainly have learned to respect and appreciate that a little bit more. I know we, we always said that, you know, that time on the plane was a great moment where nobody could get hold of you. And I, whenever I was traveling with um, PwC colleagues, I'm, I'm always really clear, I am not sitting with you on a plane and I don't want to talk about work if yes. we happen to mistakenly end up sitting near each other. It's like my it's like sacred moment of isolation and kind of recharging your mind. And I think, though, you know, those little moments of travel and what that does uh, to kind of help you uh, rebuild your mental health and resilience are really important, which is why I think, you know, I think you're right. I think, you know, business travel will be down, will always be lower than it probably was because we can do so much more and there's so much intimacy, you know, being in your, you know, you being in my home here in London Bridge and me being in your home you know, takes us to a different level, but there's still something kind of special about meeting in person. Um, and then the process of getting there, yes. I think is really, is really important. I think we're learning to appreciate that, the journey, if you say that without gagging, or that, that term, you know, the, the journey has got value in itself. Um, and it's got value for us as human beings. So I think, I hope that, will still get to um, do the do the journey. I always remember people like, oh, it's great, you get to travel a lot. Um, and obviously it's not very romantic traveling um, unless you're doing it for holiday. Um, but I think I do think there's sort of hidden value that people are starting to appreciate. Um, I, I couldn't agree more. And look, you know, I, I think of my business where, like I said, there's a lot that of benefit we get from, from the Zoom calls, but in a face-to-face -face meeting, you know, we're social creatures at the end of the day. And, there's so much happens in the, I always talk about it as like the meeting before the meeting, right? Like I go up to see a client and we've got a one hour meeting to talk about the problem. But there's that 20 to 30 minutes of meeting and greeting other people in the team where often a whole load of other projects would come out of that because we'd be sitting having a cup of tea waiting for everyone to arrive and you'd be chatting about the other issues they're facing and thinking, well, we can find a solution for that. And, and, and there was so much value was created in the sort of meeting before the meeting that is lost now because you schedule your zoom kickoff you arrive you talk about the the, the issues you, you end and you're on to the next meeting you know so i'm sure it'll come back i just don't think it'll be as big and like you say the meeting before the meeting often helps you to create context for the meeting itself and make the meeting itself more um more relevant to what you've now understood in the meeting before the meeting as it were so i think yeah it's, inter it's an interesting concept here yeah, so um 
obviously we're chatting to, I'm chatting to loads of interesting folks who used to work at PwC. Um, is there something that stays with you from your experience of PwC that kind of sits with you um, constantly sort of today as it were? Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, I'm, I moved to London to take the job at PwC and so for my formative years, that, that was all I did and all I knew, you know, so di difficult to separate it from from the rest of my life. I mean, I definitely wouldn't be in travel if it wasn't for PwC. You know, specifically one partner down in the Gatwick office, Malcolm Preston, who um, hmm. who sort of switched me into working in the travel industry. And, and so, you know, my whole life ever since ever since that has has, has led its course really because of that that moment. Um, the other thing, I suppose, is it's slightly more general, and I think, you know, having Working in a firm like PwC and for you know all, all your colleagues, I think will will often take for granted just the, the 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 sort of basics of that professional training. You know, and when you get out into the the the, the wider market, you realise that you know I suppose when you're in PwC, you're totally surrounded by bright, driven people, and you take that as the norm, and it really isn't the norm. You know, when you when you go outside, and so I think that, that just falling back on the basics of you know precision. The, the rigor and the advice we're giving, the working to type timetables, that whole kind of culture of just service delivery. I, I think, like I say, it's easy to take that for granted, and, and and when you get out into the wider world, it's 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 not, and it really it really marks you out. I think, and that's really the cornerstone of our business. That's why we've been successful. That's that's good to as a good reminder for everyone that's still in PwC. Yes, I think we I think we give ourselves a hard time sometimes. We expect, we obviously we expect a lot, um, and it's always good to. Well, it's great to uh, great to reach out with, to folks like yourself and understand that there is life outside of PwC and a very exciting and fulfilling life outside of PwC. What what does um, what does the future look like for you and your organisation? Well, yeah, it's it, it's interesting. I mean, we we are definitely having to reinvent our model on the fly. You know, we're we're sort of uh, re retooling certain aspects of the business that we don't see coming back in, in short time frame. Um, I, I think that the, the very near future, you know, we, we, uh, we, we, we took a decision early on after that initial month or, or six weeks of craziness going back to, you know, end of March and start of April when we really thought the world was going to end. We, we took a decision to make sure that we did what we could to come out of all of this as, as a better business. And the focus around things like looking after the well-being of our team and, and, and various sort of initiatives we've come up with to, to bring us together the pivot from from face to face meetings and, and telephone meetings that frankly weren't probably happening enough to now doing regular catch ups has meant that we kind of know our colleagues and, and know I think our strategy much much more intimately than than we did before and I guess through that kind of process, you know one thing that's come out is is that we have this sort of shared commitment to being slightly more impactful as a business you know in the wider community and so the thing I'm probably most excited about is we've started our journey towards being a B Corp, which um, I don't know how much you know about that sort of B Corp movement, but very much about business as a, as a force for good. And we're just a, a very small services business, but there are lots that you can do. And we're discovering as you go through that, um, the, 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 the checklist and the process of, of, of becoming a B Corp, there's a lot that we can do to just improve the life quality of our own employees and our, and our own team and, and things we can do in our local community and that really interest me and, and excite me i suppose so in the near future that's probably the the, the thing i'm most excited about and, you know beyond that i share your optimism that travel will come back i think everyone i speak to you know it's not this isn't a, a defunct product it's not like blockbuster video looking at netflix coming down the road and thinking you know our time is gone everyone you talk to and is desperate to travel as soon as they can so i think the demand is definitely there and as soon as people can they will and that will very quickly bring back you know investors and um it will you know unlock the purse strings of travel businesses and start they'll start to, to, to spend and, and and generally we as a business will um come back stronger in the long term i'm sure yeah there's something about the experience isn't there that yeah. is the it's not the destination so much as the kind of the, the whole experience do you think there's anything that we could do as a firm or in terms of the pwc alumni network that could help you on that on that journey if you like well i, I mean firstly look it's been great to reconnect with with you guys and with other former colleagues in, in the network and um 
you know, I'm probably am guilty of not being anywhere near as proactive as I should have been down the years. I mean, it's you know over 10 years since I, since I left. And uh, so, so that's great just to, just to share ideas and, 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 and some of the, my former colleagues that I'm speaking to now, to, certainly I get a lot out of that. Uh, and I would love that to continue. But if there is anyone in the, in, in the firm that has experience of a business of our sort of size going through the B Corp, process and has got anything that they've learned or anything that they'd recommend we do again that would be hugely helpful to us and we'd love to hear that i mean i think it's it's kind of very similar to you know our own desire to really ground ourselves more in our purpose mm. um you know and to really do work that really matters and makes a real difference i think that that is so important um so um just just finally uh, I'm interested to know what your what your real passions are, what really motivates you, and how that has impacted you in your career journey and your 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 choices for your career as you as you've moved through your career. Yeah, well, look, tra travel has always been a, a huge passion, and um, again, I, I I put a lot of that down to the early years at, at PwC where I was given that opportunity to to travel a lot, not not necessarily through work. I mean, I I, I took a a career break for four months and traveled South America and you know loved every minute of that but knowing that I could do that with the with the the, the guaranteed job at the end just made it such such a you know extra special um, experience I suppose and so as I moved into to travel on, on the sort of um, direction of, of, of Malcolm and have worked through I worked for the Civil Aviation Authority who runs the Atoll scheme first and loved getting to grips with a whole range of different tour operators and you know, really then had the opportunity to build up this business and scratch my own itch, really. You know, it's it's partly to be immersed in the product because because it's something I'm really passionate about, but also to have the opportunity to build a business to to allow me to indulge myself, you know, and and and, and, and travel whilst working and take time off when, you know, the, the, the children are off school and, and be able to sort of disappear for a, a month at a time has been, been brilliant. So that's what I've loved about it and it's been a real kind of honor to be able to to do that and make a living out of it as well so um long may that continue you know i really i really do hope that uh, it, it bounces back and and we can we can carry on I mean, it sounds like you've created a life that's kind of worth living that's more balanced and 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 suits you it sounds fantastic here um thank you so much um for your time it's been really interesting getting to know a bit more about your business and about why you chose to be in it and how you chose to be in it and some of the challenges and it's great to chat to you today yeah pleasure